Algorithms can be extremely useful. After all, mobile phones, the internet, and advanced medical imaging technologies wouldn't be possible without them. But algorithms can also be biased. What does bias mean for algorithms? A biased algorithm reflects legally or ethically problematic discrimination based on an attribute such as race, gender, age, sexual orientation, religion, and so on. Bias in algorithms can come from data. Bias can also come from the people who design or use algorithms. We live in a world awash in data about where we live, our purchasing habits, web browsing history, employment history, who we communicate with online, our social media posts, and much more. So there's a lot of data out there. But that doesn't mean it accurately reflects who we are. Data can reflect broader biases in society, since not all groups have equal access to opportunities such as education, financial services, and jobs. In addition, data can be used and interpreted in biased ways. Let's look at how data is used to train facial recognition algorithms. Engineers train these algorithms by showing them images of lots of faces. In general, the more face images an algorithm can analyze when it is being trained, the better it will become at performing facial recognition. But a problem occurs when the database of training images isn't diverse enough. If most of the images used to train the facial recognition algorithm are of people with lighter skin, the algorithm will perform poorly when analyzing faces of people with darker skin. This can occur if the engineers who choose the training data don't sufficiently expose the algorithm to the different types of faces the algorithm will encounter. There have been repeated instances of African Americans who were falsely arrested because a facial recognition algorithm mistook them for someone else. In 2019, an innocent New Jersey man was incorrectly identified using a facial recognition algorithm and then arrested. He spent 10 days in jail before being released. After his release, he filed a wrongful arrest lawsuit. This shows the problems that can be created by inaccuracies in facial recognition. Unfortunately, bad training data is a common source of AI bias. According to an article published by Reuters in 2018, Amazon developed an AI tool to screen resumes submitted by applicants. But the AI was trained using resumes from previous years, a group dominated by men. It learned to reduce the scores of applicants with information identifying them as female. According to Reuters, after these problems were identified, Amazon disbanded the team that was developing the AI system. Language translation algorithms can also have bias. Translation algorithms are trained by analyzing huge numbers of language samples. But since language is often used in a biased manner, an algorithm trained with language samples can acquire those biases. In a 2017 paper, researchers from the Princeton University and the University of Bath showed that when the authors used Google Translate to translate the sentence, she is a doctor, into Turkish, which is a gender neutral language, and then back to English, the result was, he is a doctor. The sentence, he is a nurse, when translated into Turkish and then back to English, became, she is a nurse. Bringing attention to these sorts of biases can help spur algorithm designers to update their algorithms. Today, Google Translate no longer has this problem. In addition, even algorithms that are initially non-biased can acquire their users' own biases and beliefs. This person believes that NASA never really sent astronauts to the moon, and that the Apollo moon landings were a big hoax. Of course, this conspiracy theory has been thoroughly debunked. But online, there are plenty of videos that continue to insist that the moon landings never happened. If a person repeatedly searches for and watches those videos, an algorithm designed to learn and adapt to viewing preferences can start suggesting other similar videos promoting that same conspiracy theory. To make things even more complex, it's not always easy to define bias. In fact, there are multiple different ways to measure bias. 
If an algorithm used to screen job applications recommends hiring 15 of the 20 men who applied and 18 of the 24 women who applied, is there gender bias in the outputs of this algorithm? In one respect, the answer might be no, because 75% of the male applicants and 75% of the female applicants who applied were recommended. In other words, the chances of the algorithm giving a positive recommendation were equal for men and for women. But what if the female applicants were on average significantly more qualified than the male applicants? Viewed in this light, the algorithm is biased because it failed to produce recommendations reflecting the stronger female applicant pool. How can it be that the algorithm is considered free of bias when measured one way, but biased when measured a different way? The answer is that bias isn't a purely mathematical concept. It's also socially constructed. A decision that one person might consider fair might be considered biased by someone else. Math can help us to understand algorithm bias and help to mitigate it, but only if we first decide how we are going to define bias. And there's no perfect definition. Depending on the situation and on the goals and perspectives of the people designing and using the algorithm, there may not be a single right way to measure bias. So what's the solution? In the next video, we'll explore how algorithm designers, policymakers, and civil society groups can work together to help address algorithm bias.